I wanted to show you the general state of the art in aircraft instruments today and to contrast them to the systems installed in older airplanes. This little electronic flight information system or EFAS box replaces the following. Attitude indicator or ADI. The horizontal situation indicator or the HSI. Slave gyro compasses, turn coordinator or turn and bank indicator. The altimeter and encoder, airspeed indicator, vertical speed indicator, all of the engine instruments, the GPS, moving map display, multifunction display, uh, pr which presents synthetic vision, all IFR, VFR charts, etc. The warning and caution system, the VOR display head, TAWS, TCAS, and a lot more. In addition to being a display and navigational device, using the touch screen, uh, it can be used to control other uh, avionics such as radios and transponders, as well as other power users such as lighting, fuel pumps, and so on. And the screen can be used in concert with function programmable switches located in places like on the control stick or a yoke to change the pages of displayed EFAS information, among other things. Uh, for example, like this. Bulky, heavy, and troublesome electromechanical gyros are replaced with very reliable and tiny solid state accelerometers, which are internal to this box. This whole box weighs about a pound. In operation, the system uses about 500 milliamps of current at 12 volts DC. Although my test wiring may look rather complicated, it is in the state you see it just now because I've been conducting some successful experiments on doing things which the equipment was never designed to do. In reality, wiring these devices is generally quite simple, with device interconnections often requiring just two communications wires, RS-232, CAN bus, or other communication protocols, and a power and a ground wire. The point of this demonstration is to contrast the differences between analog and digital, or glass, instrument systems, and to point out that analog instruments are going the way of the dinosaurs. Those analog instruments currently installed in airplanes are becoming more difficult and expensive to maintain. At the same time, their relatively poor innate reliability is being compounded by reduced repair support. Eventually, most analog aircraft instruments will become uneconomical to use both from a direct cost point of view as well as considering the indirect costs associated with the aircraft being grounded due to unserviceable analog instruments. This little box cost about $2,500 and is for experimental aircraft only. There are other components to the overall system, such as remote data acquisition and control, or RDAC modules, which do add to the cost of the complete system. The entire system for my little helicopter, which will be as well or better instrumented than a new uh, Bell Jet Ranger, cost about $10,000. That includes the comm radio, electronic circuit breaker system, solid state primary power system, the EFAS box, and all of the supporting components like magnetometer, WAS GPS receiver, and the RDAX, of which there are two. Uh, similar certified equipment is available from multiple vendors, albeit with higher prices, which naturally reflect the costs associated with getting and maintaining the certifications and providing the liability protection that the certified world expects. To the best of my knowledge, all new airplanes are being made exclusively with electronic instrumentation. Even individual instruments, uh, such as this uh, dual tachometer, are becoming increasingly electronic. Uh, the dual tach, uh, this dual tach, which uh, will mount above the EFAS at the very top of my little helicopter's instrument panel, uh, will have adjacent to it and uh, this analog airspeed indicator. Uh, in the case of an engine failure in a helicopter, the pilot's chief concerns are maintaining main rotor RPM here and airspeed, as uh, indicated here, which is required to successfully auto-rotate to a landing. Hence, the prominent location of a separately powered main rotor RPM instrument as well as the analog airspeed indicator. Now, this information will be redundant in that the information will also be visible on the EFIS screen. So that's a little tour of modern GA EFIS equipment, which illustrates the massive change in avionics te technology which has occurred over the last few years, the situational awareness improvement that's associated with this type of gear, and the accompanying uh, safety improvements are, are really dramatic. And uh, so I thought it would be interesting to uh, provide a little demonstration. There you go.